leftover paints from previous pours. We all have them. They sit on the shelf. We ponder what to do. We don't know what's mixed into them. Will they work together? These are all questions I'm going to answer in today's video, so let's get started. Hello, my friend. Welcome to another video. So if this is your first time here joining me, thank you so very much for joining. I am on a path today, a path that's going to lead me to using up all of my leftover paints. I don't know if you're like me, but I have more leftover paint colors than underwear at this point. So <laughs> with that being said, I want to show you some fun, easy techniques that you can go ahead and do and combine all of your, your leftover paints no matter what they are mixed with, okay? I want to show you some fun, fast, easy techniques that will help you create a beautiful painting. So I have here a 16 by 20 canvas, a black canvas. I have in this bucket here a bowl of paint that was made out of some blues, some greens. I just mixed them all together to create that one color. It even has a little bit of, uh, what is it called? Pearl in it. So it's a shimmery, I guess we'll say moss green. And then over here, I have things like uh, bloom paints that are left over. A cell activator. Uh, these are mixed with regular American Floetrol where these little ones were mixed with Australian flow trust. So we have a mishmash of things. One thing we're not going to be using will be this, because that is glitter and I didn't pay attention, but we may use this glitter, leftover glitter glue I made in the final piece once it's dry. So the only thing that I have mixed up here fresh today is the white, which happens to be Deco Arts white acrylic paint thin down with some American Floetrol. Everything else that you see here has been sitting for at least four to six months. As long as they are in airtight containers, they will work fine. So all I'm doing here is adding my leftover paints into separate cups. Again, it is perfectly fine to use paints that are mixed with different recipes together. We just need to make sure they are all the same consistency. So now I'm giving this a feel and I'm gonna start feeling them all, okay? And I'm gonna start looking at what they look like when they drizzle off the stick and hit the surface. Does the path that it's leaving or the trace look the same as this one here? It does. I'm thinking that most of these are all the same thickness as this one, but I might find one that's much thinner. So far, I haven't. And for me to have to go through and thin all of these down, it would have to be a really big difference, okay? Just a little tiny bit thinner or thicker is not going to make me um, thin them all down. So let's just go through each one, feel them up a little bit, give them a little mix. So far, so good. These are all perfect, all very close to this one. So it's all good. Like I said, if I had found one that was thinner, I would have made this one and all the others thin like that one, thinner like that one, but they're all pretty much in the same ballpark. What you want to do though, is if you're going to make an additional color with this, like, like the white, I had to make more white. You want to do this step first before you mix up your white so you know how thick or thin to make this one, okay? I've been doing this a long time, so I know. 
just by, you know, shaking those colors in the bottle, how thick they are. So I made this already, but again, I just thinned this still one down with some American flow trial and a little bit of water. And uh, the other ones are a mishmash of rep recipes. So let me get set up and we're going to have some fun with these colors. See what we can make. This is about having fun, relaxing, de-stressing, forgetting about the world, okay? We don't have a composition in mind. We're just going to go with the flow, literally, and see where it takes us. So what we are learning here is that paints that may have been mixed with different ingredients will work together. Again, however, you want them to be the same thickness. So I add a little bit of that paint to the canvas just to help my colors when I begin to tilt, and away we go. All right, so first let's do a, a flip cup. Do a, a few flip cups. Got one there and one there. This one I will start off with a little bit of that cell activator at the bottom of the cup. If you want to use something like, well, there's not much in here, so I won't even bother dirty another cup, and we'll just use that one. If you want to use something like a cell activator in a flip cup, you always want to make sure it's on the bottom so that when you flip the cup, the cell activator lands on top of the colors. All right, so the first color that goes in is the last color to come out. Just think of it that way. All right, so we'll put a little tiny bit of that in there. And then we will follow up with some gold. Just nice and slow down the sides. This is how you layer paint in a cup. You pour down the side of the cup and it kind of just lands on top of the surface. Coming up, I'll be showing you how to prepare a dirty cup. Cheers, my friends. Hold the cup by the bottom and just like that. So right across diagonally, place the other one and there is definitely, I think, some silicone in here. Now we're going to pull up this way a little bit and slowly come back like this. Notice how the colors come out of the cup more in blocks of color versus blending. Those are the effects of layering paint in a cup. With a dirty pour cup, the colors churn together inside of the cup before you pour them out on the canvas. And again, I will be showing you that in a minute. First, though, I'm going to just torch a little bit, and then we're going to move over to the other side of the canvas. Now we'll do the other side. Notice how I don't lift the cup straight up ever. If you lift the cup up straight, it's going to put drip marks in your painting. So you want to pull straight back and tilt back, if that makes sense. Let's watch it again. Back and then tilt back. And that is the proper way to do a flip cup. So moving on next, Let's talk about some ribbon pouring. I didn't realize when scanning over this that it looked like a fish that was hooked onto another fish, a jellyfish. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But let me show you the difference in layering the cups. I'll just reuse the cup that we did the flip cup with. So you could pour some paint in and you can go down the edge like this, and they will kind of layer on top of each other. Or you can pour from a little higher up like this, and they will blend. Okay, I hope you're seeing that. So we'll go for the 
dirty pour. Whoop, there was a clump in that. We'll have to find that eventually. This is a dirty pour where they all mix together. So this would be called a dirty ribbon pour. I've been doing these side views for you so you can see up close and personal things like how my hand moves. Um, so we'll just kind of wing it. Come up this way. Okay. And now we'll do another. Again, we're just kind of going with the flow. So now what I'm doing is I'm adding some just of any color around the edge just so I can help myself when I go to tilt. Um, I put some sage over there. Just kind of want to pull it out towards the edge because what will happen is this paint that we poured will get hung up on this dry area. And let's say you like this area here. What will happen is it will roll over on itself ruining your design so that's why i'm putting down some of this leftover paint just to get it around the edges there and and help assist in my tilting process some of this design will come off because it's just how it is you can't keep the whole thing unless you're doing some kind of a, a pre-planned thing like a swipe or a bloom then your design you know pretty much stays but If it's something like a flip cup, a dirty pour, a, a dirty ribbon pour like we just did, some of the design goes. So just take your time with it. There's no rush. Remember, we are relaxing, having a good time, forgetting about those bills and those kids that don't listen and husbands that maybe drive you crazy. <laughs> I know mine does. Is this the part where I should say I wouldn't trade him for anything? <laughs> uh, I'm just teasing. Or am I? <laughs> All right, so now we're going to take our time and look at the design and tilt it around and figure out what areas we don't like, what areas we do like. All of that good stuff. So we're going to start by going, I guess, this way. Now... Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. We'll start up at this corner. Go nice and slow. You can see all the odd shapes we are getting with that little bit of silicone in there. If you need a good video on cleaning silicone, I have one. I will put that in the description. Let's take it nice and slow. And then, you know, we'll add to this if we have to. So again, the key is to really go slow with the tilting. I teach classes and the number one thing I see people do is they pick up the canvas and they just start tilting it crazy. And you really got to take it slow and kind of, you know, watch where the paint is moving and the designs are going. So now, obviously, I've sped this up for the sake of uh, the video, you know, so you're not here all day watching me tilt, but I really like to try to take it slow. But, you know, this time, the tilting wasn't so important for me because, again, I wasn't going for a certain composition. I was just looking to have some fun with my leftover acrylic paints use them up and try to create a piece of art that was visually satisfying. So I made a few more dirty cups and I am pouring some more ribbons around. I'm going to pull out my uh, little tools, my little 
catalyst wedges and we're going to have some fun with this. So I'm going to let you watch the rest of it and I will be back. So in the end, everybody always, no, I'm not going to say everybody. That's wrong with me. A lot of people go into this and they have a certain expectation of creating something that looks like somebody else's. We see a beautiful ring pour or a straight pour or a swipe or whatever it may be. And we're like, I want to do that to try to create that. But what I want you to try to remember is, is that some of these people that you're watching, myself included, have been doing this for years. Some of the techniques that they're doing are very challenging. I'm going to be straight up honest with you. A Dutch pour is very hard to do unless you have um, practice to begin with. I don't want you to, to... I don't want to say I don't want you to try it without having a little bit of experience doing something simple like this or, um, you know, deter you, but it's very important to understand what consistency does, what recipes do, um, you know, how to hold the blow dryer the right way and uh, just things like that. So, you know, I would love for you, if you're a beginner to just start at the bottom with the easier ones and kind of work your way up. But if you're stubborn like me and you just want to go for it because I was that person, I have plenty of beginner style tutorials on my channel. If you go to the home page, you're going to see tabs up at the top that say home, videos, community, uh, playlists. Under the playlists area, you're going to see categories and there's one called Back to Basics Beginners Videos. In those videos, I go A to Z you know, how to mix the paint, what, you know, different recipes, all of that. There's so many videos under there, so check those out. And uh, most importantly, I had fun with this today. I don't care what the outcome was. I had fun playing with my wedges and using up my paints. And I happen to think that it's a pretty snazzy painting. Now, 
I'm quite sure there was silicone in one of these colors. That's why you see all these little eyeball looking cells popping up, which is cool because it's fitting the theme of the painting kind of just like outer space, alienish, and um, I need to wash it before I go any further once it dries. So to wash it, I'm going to literally take it in the tub with me, use Dawn dish soap. I again have a tutorial for that. I will put it in the description for you. Look at this. Oh, I see you. <laughs> Maybe we should title this one, The Hills Have Eyes After the Movie, because it's kind of funky, creepy. <laughs> but th this is the kind of art that I like to do, just to relax and go with the flow. Go with your intuition and have some fun. So I want to thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed the video, please click like. Please subscribe, please comment, and please share. Now, I did a, um, I made an announcement in the last video that I am giving away one free online private with me one hour class, and uh, that is still going. I will be picking a winner for that in my next video. So, if you did not watch the video before this one, you still have time. All right. I love you all. Thank you so very much for joining me. And until the next time, my friends, happy pouring.